hello everyone. So, uh, I would like to talk about success today. During student life, how do you think a student would describe success? I think for a student, it would be being the class topper or the university rank holder, that would be success. For most of us in the outside world, there are different definitions of success. For most people, it is the money they earn. For some, it is the power or position in a particular organization. To some people, it is fame. For others, it is mostly job security and knowing that their family is well provided for. I don't have a lot of money or power or position, nor am I particularly very secure in my job. But I consider myself successful because I'm happy and busy and I'm doing what I love doing. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy doesn't mean I'm happy every day. There are times when I'm stressed out, frustrated or sad because something which happened at work. But overall, I wouldn't exchange all of that for anything. When you see school ch children these days, they are pushed so much to do better, to be the best in their class, to top their class or their school. They, have the, they learn these additional skill sets such as foreign languages like German or Spanish or even coding. I don't know in the long term how it would contribute to the growth. When we were kids, we were exposed to the outside world somewhere between the ages 3 to 5 when we went to preschool or school. And the first professional people we met were our teachers or doctors when we went to get vaccinated. So during that time, we aspired to be teachers and doctors. Slowly as we grew up and we got additional information and we met new people, our aspirations changed. During my teenage years, I wanted to be a forensic expert or to be more precise, a detective. What they called in movies or whatever I re read on books or watched on TV. After a couple of days, I wanted to be a journalist. And towards the end of my teenage, I was uh, on my way to becoming a dentist. During the, towards the end of my graduation, again, I was uncertain as to what I would do. Most of my friends were planning to open their dental clinics once they pass out. Some were planning to study further and prepare for the entrance exam for post-graduation in dentistry. And some of them were even planning their marriages. But I didn't know what to do. I was so uncertain as to what I would do after passing out. Towards the end of my uh, graduation, I came across this small field of, uh, within dentistry called forensic odontology. And I was so interested. I started reading about it and I decided that I wanted to study this subject further. Forensic odontology is uh, a large part of forensic odontology deals with identifying unknown human remains. So for example, if the police finds a skeletonized body or a decomposed or charred human body, it is very difficult for them to say who that person is. And unless they know who that person is, it is very difficult to investigate how that person was killed or why that person was killed. So uh, we as forensic odontologists help in identifying such uh, human remains. And at that time when I started searching for colleges or universities who would be teaching this subject, I couldn't find anything in India. So I thought, why not? I applied for universities abroad where they were teaching this subject. It was not so easy. It needed a lot of focus. I needed to convince my family uh, to let me study this subject because they had no idea what it meant. In fact, at that time, most people had no idea what it meant, even within the field of medicine. So I jumped through the smaller hoops, like giving uh, exams and interviews to get selected in such courses. And uh, I got selected in UK. After completing my post-graduation degree there, I decided to come back to India because I wanted to bring this field back to India 
this field which was being used so routinely in the western countries from the 1960s and 70s they were using it to solve cases and it barely even existed in india so i thought it deserved some attention in india and the criminal justice system here could definitely use another specialized branch of forensics so when i came back to india that is when the real struggle began i didn't know where to go for a job because it barely existed in india no one knew about it so where should i go and apply for a job it's not like a freshly graduated forensic odontologist could start their own private consultancy so uh, we have a system here and mostly if you want to work in real criminal cases you want to work with the police you need to be in a government institution so i needed to be in a government institution where medico legal work is being done but since it didn't exist i didn't know what to do so i up went all across india and applied to so many medical colleges and dental colleges and forensic laboratories i went from pillar to post and wherever i went to apply i used to get different suggestions from the higher ups from administration from from the decision makers in fact even my own friends and relatives used to give me suggestions why did you do study this subject this expertise which does not even exist in india people used to say you should have opened a dental clinic in these many years your clinic would have been flourishing they used to say that if you had a post graduation degree in more conventional branch of dentistry we would have given you a job why some even said why did you come back from uk you should have stayed there so it was my lowest point and at that time i also started feeling that maybe i did a mistake i shouldn't have done this i want to say at this point of time is you know for you it may sound like it's not a big deal it's not a big struggle i agree maybe it is an easy struggle we'll call it an easy struggle this that is how life is it is a little easy for some people and unimaginably hard for some people but we all come across good times and bad times the mo the common thing which we need to do during good times or bad times is only one we need to focus on what is in our control and not on what we cannot control so that is what we di i did at that time after almost one year of unemployment after getting my post graduation degree after going to more than 40 medical colleges dental colleges forensic laboratories all across india i just did that one thing i focused on what was under my control and that was to keep on looking for an opportunity till something comes up now don't get me wrong at that time uh, i also wanted to have a backup plan that what if nothing came up you know after spending so many years so i also started looking for a place to rent and open my own clinic but i didn't leave looking for an opportunity at the same time during this time uh, when i went to a government institution in mumbai uh, i was given a small opportunity of 6 months contract plain post it's called a house officer post which is given to freshly graduated medical and dental students to practice before they do post graduation so in spite of already having a post graduation degree i grabbed that opportunity with both my hands because at least i would get to work in the field which i loved at least i would get to do some kind of forensic work so i took that opportunity of 6 months contract post immediately after i joined i got my first case it was a case of gang rape where there was some dental evidence involved i did my investigation i submitted my report and my report got accepted in court after cross examination that was my first case and after that slowly i started getting cases from all across mumbai from other districts in maharashtra and also other states in india that was when i decided that i am not going to leave after 6 months <laughs> and i'm still there today it's been almost 10 years in these 10 years i saw my friends my colleagues my juniors in more conventional fields get promoted before me they became my seniors at work was it difficult 
Yes. But was it worth it? Of course, yes. I was the first forensic odontologist to be attached to a government medical institution, forensic medicine department and autopsy center in India. I was working on so many complex and sensitive cases, getting work from all over India. So yes, in spite of all those difficulties, in spite of seeing my friends uh, and my juniors getting promoted before me, I was very happy and I wouldn't exchange that for anything. Now for you today, uh, I have this small idea. We should remember that a future in which is uncertain, a future we cannot predict, it is central to learning and growing. We should let go of certainty. The opposite of certainty is not uncertainty. The opposite is openness, curiosity, and willingness to embrace paradox rather than choose sides. A popular American author, Robert Greene, says, the need for certainty is the greatest disease of the mind. We, as scientists and researchers, when we do a research and we want to publish that research in a reputable scientific journal, we expect that the reviewers will come up with some comments and some criticisms. Being a scientist requires you to be open to criticism, the willingness to accept when we are wrong, and change or modify our ideas and behavior. Many people feel the need to be certain. They crave the sense of security which comes from having a certain career. But how many people end up being happy in that career? Does life turn out as they expected? How many people decide to change their jobs or even their professions when they realize that they are not happy and satisfied with the work they are doing? We all know someone whom we consider successful, right? Who do we consider successful? Who are these people? Are these successful people those who have very high IQs or who were uh, university uh, toppers or rank holders? Not necessarily. Successful people have certain qualities. They have passion, they have sincerity, they, they are patient, they have social skills, communication skills, they are optimistic, they have this sense of wonder and they want to explore newer ways to get better at what they, want, they are doing. And above all, they have perseverance, the never give up attitude. Every successful person has experienced failure. A, a successful person doesn't mean that they fail less. It means that they persist more. So in spite of a large setback, a successful person would continue to move on and move forward. We will all face hurdles, but we need to focus and move forward. Being in a medical institute, making space for a speciality which doesn't even exist, uh, it didn't even exist at that time, and working was a big challenge. In fact, it is still a big challenge, and there were times when I contemplated quitting forensics and going back to clinical dentistry. And I'll always remember what my husband said at that time. He told me that what is the guarantee you will be happy working in a clinic? Would you be happy knowing that you will not be a part of a forensic investigation? What is the guarantee that uh, uh, being in a clinical practice, you would be happy, you would be satisfied? Whatever problem you're facing today, is it worth leaving your subject, which you love so much? Is it worth leaving all the hard work you have done? So I realized that no, it is not worth it. And I would definitely like to continue being a forensic expert. So yes, we will all face good days and bad days. The bad days will pass and the good days will pass too. So we need to remember to be humble, but at the same time, courageous and determined. Don't give up on your goals. When you face hurdles, put your head down, focus on your work, and keep on going. It will pass, and when it passes, you will come out stronger and wiser. Surround yourself with your people. 
It could be your family, it could be your friend, it could be your teachers, it could be your colleagues at work who push you, who show you the brighter side when you are seeing the dark side, who understand your passion and dreams. Stay with them, surround yourself with these people, avoid negative people, be optimistic and work hard. Do not get distracted by the hundreds of suggestions and advice you would receive from random people. Do not change your mind every five seconds when you come across some new information. Just stick to your goal. You don't have to be certain 100%. As long as you know that you are headed in the general direction of your passion, you will be fine. Leave some scope for uncertainty, for growth. Do not think that just because uh, some XYZ business, people are making a lot of money or XYZ field of study, people are getting huge salary packages. Everyone is doing that. I will do that too. No. Always remember in life, if you do what most people are doing, you will only achieve what most people achieve. Thank you.